Welcome, everybody, to the next episode of Think Business. This is John Yeager with Bennett Thrasher, in charge of the Business Transformation Services Group. Um, today, we have what I call part two of our continuous planning dialogue. Um, last episode, we talked to uh, a couple folks about the infrastructure setting up uh, an FPNA service and FPA you know, tools and vision and those kind of things. And today, I wanted to get into really the nuts and bolts of it. Um, I, uh, I do want to apologize. I think it's day 150 of not having a haircut. So um, I, I normally uh, am a little bit more professional on this, but uh, you know that's life in the pandemic. So um, today I want to uh, introduce uh, our guest, uh, Gina Miller. Gina is a partner at Bennett Thrasher, and she is uh, heads our business valuation group. Uh, Gina, welcome to the show. Hi, John. I'm glad to be here with you today. Uh, thanks for introducing me. i uh, tell you a little bit, uh, your viewers, a little bit about my background. I have been preparing business valuations for over 20 years now um, at some small boutique firms before I joined Bennett Thrasher uh, ooh, six plus years ago, I think. Uh, partner there a couple years. And so we run a group that does value, valuation services for a variety of purposes. One of the keys in uh, key factors to remember in our valuations is that we do a lot of cash flow forecasting. And so um, a lot of our valuations are really built on that. And so I'm happy to talk to you about that today. Awesome. Well, I know from our, from a little bit of previous discussions, uh, there's really a process you go through when you have a client that's, that's wanting your help with financial planning analysis and the whole process. What are the kind of typical steps that you go through with a client? Well, with any sort of client service, the first thing we do, and we spend a lot of time with it, is to find out exactly what our clients need. But sometimes clients come to us and they don't know what they need or they think they need something different. And so really talking through, you know, um, what they need and then what that need looks like. So cash flow forecasting, uh, financial planning analysis, what does that look like to them? And then really what kind of a, what kind of detail needs to go into an analysis? When they look forward, are they looking at high level or are they getting down into some nitty gritty details that we like to spend our time in? Gotcha. So if we, if we take the first one uh, to start with, so assessing the need, um, give me some thoughts on, on a conversation to have with a client around how they assess their needs, what you consider, what questions you gotta ask, you know, th those kind of things. Sure, well, first off, I, we ask the client, you know, what brings you to us today? What, what is that tipping point? What is it that you've decided uh, it created this need for you? So a couple of my last clients, the need has been uh, banking needs. So they have covenants that they have to meet, and they want to show the banker that they're going to be able to meet those over the next few months, next few quarters. Um, but in addition to that, and this was really important too, because they had more than one need, not only did they need it for the banks, but they also wanted that information so that they can help manage that cash flow. And so it was really important to have a long discussion with them about that. Um, but you know, who, who are the stakeholders in the process? Another important question because is this for a banker to look at? He may look at it differently and will look at it differently than a manager or maybe an investor in the company. And so those are some key questions that we ask. So coming out of the pandemic, which we all hope we're soon to come out of, and we're starting to see some, you know, some uptick in that, um, I would imagine that there's some need that you're gonna see out there for people that need to look at uh, planning in a different light. Um, almost a lot more flexibility, a lot more scenarios, those kind of things. Are you starting to hear a little bit of that? We are working with our clients on scenario analysis because it's so important to them. Um, nobody knows what this looks like on the other side or the coming out side, whether we're going to have a quick recovery, whether it's going to be a slow recovery, or whether it's going to be maybe an up and down recovery. And so, um, we have been working with our clients on various analyses to help them be prepared for no matter what the outcome. I think our clients are focusing more and more on 
uh, that preparedness because this caught them by surprise and nobody likes that feeling of being surprised. Absolutely. And, and that's, you know, in, in the previous uh, part that we did, we talked a lot about coming out of this and the surprise of people and maybe some of the lack of planning that they did, uh, maybe some of the old school planning, annual planning that doesn't give you a lot of flexibility as you kind of go through uh, changes. Um, what what does your model typically look like and, and how would you um, work with a client in kind of that model and then maybe how would you, uh, how would it benefit you and the client to be able to work with the, in a continuous planning model? Sure. So, so we work with clients that are the entire spectrum from no planning <laughs> to very much involved in their planning. So they'll have an annual budget or a best clients three to four, five year forecast which is great that they're thinking out that far and they you know just need some help um, with the detail um, annual budgeting is a huge process for business owners and their management um, it's a it's restarting every year going through the facts um, and i do see that a lot in our small to medium-sized businesses that um, there it becomes this process, maybe this two month process that happens once a year. Um, the downside with that is you're not very flexible. You can't necessarily adapt to, well, let's take 2020 as an example. <laughs> there's, there's was no way to quickly adapt to that. If you're only doing the process annually, you would have done your budget for your calendar year back in November and December, and then COVID comes along in March and changes everything and you're not ready. So certainly continuous planning is the absolute best where you can kind of you can feed those actuals into the model and then have these various scenarios and have them at your fingertips. Absolutely. Um, so as you dive into the detail, um, helping clients identify drivers to their business and try to plan around those and what does that look like? What's that process look like? It, are, do clients pretty much understand what the drivers of the business are, or is that a big part of what you guys do? Well, it'll depend on the clients. Um, we work with um, you know clients that are in a variety of industries. So uh, we've just been working a lot of cash flow forecasting with an engineering firm. Um, they're unique, and so. And so, and one thing I want to mention is when you get down to the details, it's very unique to each client. Um, but this client is unique because their projects may last six to nine months and there are revenue recognition requirements with their accounting side of things, but that has little or nothing to do with the cash flow forecasting. And so, and the banker is very keen on understanding the cash flow for this. So, um, it, you know, it takes some digging down. Uh, a client may initially know, uh, maybe want to simplify matters with, with just saying, well, let's just assume that we invoice them at the end of the project and that's how the cash comes in. But in reality, they actually charge a retainer. They um, spend money throughout the project buying equipment. Um, and so for us, it's really getting down to when is the cash really coming in? And when is it really going out over this long period of time? A little more unique than some um, shorter project uh, non-service companies. Gotcha. So what are some of the key drivers that you see? Obviously revenue is a key driver. What are some of the other things that you, and I always say, I know it's nuanced by client, but you know, some big buckets that, um, that, that you tend to find kind of across clients. Sure. Well, you know, we look at revenue, uh, revenue by service line. You know, what is it that drives the revenue? Um, what is it that, um, you know, is it is it just a growth rate? Does some revenue depend upon other revenue lines? Uh, then we'll look at cost of goods sold. Hopefully that's relatively steady. Um, but, you know, you get into industries such as uh, those that you steal or other you know, supplies that fluctuate a lot. So we'll be looking at that. Of course, there are operating expenses and those may be driven based on revenue or growth, you know, depending upon if they're variable or fixed. So we get down into a lot of details. Gotcha. 
Well, I, I think we're kind of running up towards the end of our time. Um, but I wanted to give you a chance to say, you know, if you want to wrap things up, uh, you know, uh, a, a last message and also maybe, you know, plug you and what you do and maybe how to reach you. Oh, absolutely. I'd be happy to. So, um, yeah, you know, I think cash flow forecasting is one of the most important things that managers and business owners can do to help with their planning. Um, again, it's something that we do. We do it uh, as a consulting service to our clients. We also do it part of our valuation work. And so it's, um, you really want to work with somebody who's experienced. So happy to help. Reach out to me at Bennett Thrasher. Absolutely. And, um, and the interesting thing is you and I have, have started to work together as we, as we put the tools in place, right? So the continuous accounting tool, and then we're obviously a reseller of a planful. And, and so putting those tools together in a continuous planning environment, we, we hope that we're giving you and your clients and our clients the power to, to do this continuing planning exercise uh, that, that's really needed and, and kind of the foreseeable future, um, if not longer than that. So uh, it's, it's been a pleasure to work with you from that standpoint and I look forward to continue to do that. You as well, John. I'm glad we can serve clients together. Absolutely. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, I hope this was helpful to you and please reach out to me, hashtag Think Business, uh, or John Yeager at Bennett Thrasher. You can, you can find me there. Um, and we look forward to the next episode of Think Business and uh, Everybody take care and stay safe.